Some big things happening. Even last night while you were sleeping, there were some very serious events that transpired against the United States in North Africa. Crenshaw, who is a decorated war hero himself, special ops, came back from his military life and, thank God, ran for Congress. And he's not a pirate. He lost his eye in battle. He said, and I agree, no, there isn't an imminent ground war or World War III. No, the options are not A, do nothing, and B, all-out war. There is a lot in between. Example, striking a terrorist leader to reestablish deterrence. Everyone stop with the excessive and mindless rhetoric. Amen. Brilliant statement by, by a man who I, I hope someday runs for president. His words are right. Right now, all around this nation, we've got a great atmosphere of rhetoric taking place that we need to address today as a church because I'm, if I'm faithful to telling you the truth, and the only reason why I wouldn't is because I wouldn't have the time to get to all of it today, but if we don't talk about it here, you're not going to hear it anywhere. So first things first, are you ready? Because if somebody walks in late, then, you know, you're, it never goes over well. So number one, right here, right now, we're in church, you need to know the gospel before we go any further. Before we do anything about updates, about what's happening with Iran, the United States, about what's happening in our nation, what's transpiring in Israel right now, what's going on, you need to know the gospel. Because you know what? The rapture could take place in the, in the next few moments. Uh, the earth, this is California, wake up. The earth could open up and swallow us. See, Pastor, don't say that. <laughs> this is California, the earth could open up and swallow us. <laughs> Anything could happen, right? And here's the deal. This world that you and I live in, all the mayhem and junk we see on the TV, the tsunamis, the storms, the earthquakes, the violence, the senseless murdering that's taking place in our nation and the world, this is not what God made. He did not make this. We made this. Mom and dad made it. Adam and Eve, they started it, but I can't blame them because they were perfect. And they still sinned. And if I would have been Adam, apparently I would have done the same thing Adam did. And our original mom and dad plunged us into sin. And God forever in this book, in fact, I've done this to you guys before and it's pretty awesome to take a look at, here we go, right here. See this? This is all of creation. This is all of Eden. This is all of wonderful. This is everything beautiful. And then Adam and Eve sins. <laughs> and from, from this chapter on is God saying, Please stop it. <laughs> Please stop it. Come back to me. And this is how you can come back to me. I will provide for you a sacrifice. Not a man, not an animal, but my own son. You have so ruined this world I've made that it's going to take the blood of Almighty God to redeem you out of the mess because I'm holy. And my son is going to come and take on your humanity and he's going to live 33 years just according to the prophets as foretold and he's going to die on the cross after living a perfect life because he's going to be betrayed by the very ones he died for and he's going to be crucified and he's going to be put in the ground and on the third day be resurrected from the dead and if you believe in my work to redeem you, you will be saved. If not, you will be lost. It's God's plan. It's what he did for us. The gospel is there is no way that you can make it to heaven unless you believe that Jesus Christ is the way, the truth, and the life because Jesus said no man comes to the Father but through me. See, man, that's narrow. 
that's not only narrow, dude, that is hairline, that is, that is narrow, narrow, narrow. Because God's only going to do this one time. And it's a, he's a personal savior, which means you've got to make that decision personally, and you need to agree with God. Ek homo legeo. You need to say the same word about sin that God says about it. And you and I are sinners, and we're not going to go to heaven. In fact, we're doomed. The Bible says the entire human race is condemned until we get out of this mess. And to get out of the mess is to turn to Christ. And to turn to Christ is to become a Christ follower. I'm not even going to use the title Christian anymore because it has been so pimped out and prostituted and twisted that everybody's a Christian these days, and it's disgusting. No, Christ follower. God wants you to follow his son Jesus here and now and all the way into heaven. And so there it is. You heard the gospel, so don't write me later and say, I didn't hear it. Uh, If you didn't hear it, it's because you weren't listening. You should have been listening. Guys, chapter 38. Can we put it on the screen? Chapter 38, the book of Ezekiel. Church family, we're going to walk through this. Uh, I need, God help us because uh, there's too much. There's too much. The prophet Ezekiel. If you don't know your Bible, we are now stepping back. We got our sandals on. We're going back 20, to be safe, 2,700 years ago. That's a beautiful sound, by the way, to hear your Bibles turning. Wow. Chapter 38, verse 1. Now the word of the Lord came to me. This is Ezekiel speaking, saying, Son of man, set your face against Gog. G-O-G. Not God. G-O-D. Gog. G-O-G. It's a title. It's not, it's not a name of a person. It is a title in Hebrew that means that the military leader is the same one as the political leader. Not like a presidency. Uh, This would be more more of a ruler type that has control, absolute say, over a nation and its a military that he's the general and he is the politician for a nation, Gog, G-O-G. And we don't have to guess of to what area he controls of the land of Magog. In your note-taking, write down Genesis chapter 10. Genesis chapter 10 is what's known as the table of nations. Magog. You see, where's that? Well, Magog uh, is... The area today it has always been the area of where Russia is now, north of the Black Sea, north of the Caspian Sea. It, but he tells us more. The prince of Rosh, Meshach, and Tubal, all of those geographical areas are not mysteries. They're in the geographical land of Soviet Union or now today, Russia. And prophesy against him. Who's him? Gog. And say thus, Thus says the Lord God, Behold, I'm against you, O Gog, the prince of Rosh, Meshach, and Tubal. I will turn you around. Pause right there. Whoever this is, they're not willing to be looking in a certain direction. Whatever God's going to do with this individual, he's got to turn them around. You all see that? I need group participation here. You see that? You got to be turned around. This person, what's implied is whatever's going on over there, I'm looking over here. Watch what God does to this individual. He says, I'm going to turn you around, put hooks in your jaws, and lead you out with all your army, horses, and horsemen. He goes on, all splendidly clothed in great company and bucklers and shields, all of them handling swords. And remember, this is Ezekiel. 2,700 years ago, trying to describe a modern-day war or battle coalition. Verse 5, Persia. Does anybody know the modern day name of this ancient Persia? Iran. Iran. Ethiopia is not only Ethiopia. This word means Ethiopia even larger. This area even encompasses down to the Sudan region. And do you recognize the word Libya? 
The word Libya in your Bible has always been there in your Bible, and that's that region, not exactly limited to the nation of Libya today. It's a little broader than that, and we're talking about the top cap area of North Africa. Are all with them. They're all together. By the way, those are all now Islamic nations, Muslim nations. You say, well, Rosh, Meshach, and Tubal, Russia is not. No, it's not. It's not, but the coalition is. So watch. Even though the leader's got to be turned around, the leader's going to get involved in something, and every nation mentioned is a Muslim nation now, as of this century. All of them with shields and helmet, Gomer, and all its troops, regions that are near and around the areas of uh, Turkey to the west and the north of Turkey, and all its troops, the house of Togomar, the ancient uh, symbol and, tri and tribal name of what is known as Turkia today, or Turkey, is historically known as the house of Togomar. And from the north and all its troops, many people are with you. Prepare yourself. This is where it gets awesome. Prepare yourself and be ready. Remember, he's talking to Gog. You and all your companies that are gathered. Listen to this. About you, gathered about you, and be a what? Be a what? Be a guard. You see that word right here? Guard in the English? Looks so innocent, doesn't it? You look the word up in the Hebrew language, which Ezekiel is speaking Hebrew. They'll gather them about you and be a supplier provider. The word means in Hebrew, supplier and provider. Who is? Gog, who is the prince of Rosh, Meshach, and Tubal, in this region of the world that's to the north, you're going to be a supplier provider to these nations that are listed, Persia and the surrounding regions, mentioned even as far west as Libya. And he says that after many days, you will be visited. In the latter years, you will come into the land of those who have been brought back from the sword and gathered from many people on the mountains of... Israel. Say it loud. Israel. Just for fun, do it again. Israel. 2,700 years ago, ladies and gentlemen, we're looking at this. A people dispersed throughout all the world will be brought back at the end to a place called Israel. Not Palestine. The Bible doesn't call it Palestine. Doesn't call it Peru? Doesn't call it California? I'm, it sounds like I'm joking, but I'm dead serious. Isn't it amazing? Your Bible says Israel. Hey, if you're a doubter in the house, if you're a skeptic, listen up. Israel, which had long been desolate. True or false? True. Big true. They were brought back out of the nations. True or false? True. true. And now all of them dwell safely. Israel's prospering today, strongest economy in the region. Israel today, Leviathan natural gas discovery. Israel's oil discovery are beyond huge, beyond, they have enough to sustain them for, I, th I think it's over 1,500 years of discovery. Not to mention their genius. More Nobel Prize winners for being a genius have gone to a Jew than any other race. Do you ever think of that? A, 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 a country the size of New Jersey that uh, blankets all of Europe in fruit and vegetables. The number one supplier of fruit and vegetables to Europe. Israel. You can't go there without bumping into a banana or something. <laughs> you, this is Gog, will ascend like a storm covering the land like a cloud, you and all your troops and many peoples with you, multiple nations, that word means. Thus says the Lord God, on that day it shall come to pass that thoughts will arise in your mind and you will make an evil plan. You will say, I will go up against the land of unwalled villages. I will go to a peaceful people who dwell safely. You ask the Jews today, you would think they must be scared to death. The, the Jews are so confident in their military and in their schmarts. <laughs> We're not afraid of anything. We can take care of anything. 
And their history shows that they can take care of things, but you got to be careful about that. They're not trusting God right now. They trust it in themselves. Oh, God will change that someday, but... So he says that uh, them dwelling without walls, having neither bars nor gates, verse 12, to take... To, oh, have you come, God, to take a plunder and to take a booty? To stretch out your hand against the waste places that are again, inhabited, and against the people gathered from the nations? Has this coalition of nations come against Israel to take its wealth? Ladies and gentlemen, as you sit here today, Israel just signed a natural gas deal with Europe. You know what? Listen, one-third of the Russian economy is selling natural gas to Europe at at a very high price. Are you sitting down? Israel's discovery is so huge that Israel has just agreed with much of Europe. We will sell you natural gas so cheap. We got so much. And guess what? You think Russia can sit back and let that happen? Russia's existence is being threatened by Israel's blessings. Is that the hook that pulls them down to take a booty? The the observers say... Are you coming to take all of these good things? Who have acquired livestock and goods, who dwell in the midst of a land, Sheba and Dedan? Sheba and Dedan, what are, what are we talking about? Sheba and Dedan uh, has always been known, everybody in the whole world has always been able to spin the globe and put their fingers on Sheba and Dedan, but you, but you say, well, I don't think I can. Yeah, you can, because after World War II, um, the... Much of the world, much of the areas of the region of the world were divided up post-World War II. And Sheba and Dedan uh, was given to a family. The Saudi family. Have you ever heard of that name before? Have you ever heard of Saudi Arabia? That is Sheba and Dedan. Which, by the way, Saudi Arabia just sent Israel a happy Hanukkah greeting. For real. They're friends now. This is interesting because the Bible said they would be friends in the end. I'm not making it up. This is, this is amazing. So they're asking the question, have you come to take all these things, their silver and gold, to take away livestock goods and to take a great plunder? He goes on, therefore, son of man, that's Ezekiel, prophesy and say to Gog, thus says the Lord God, on that day when my people Israel dwell safely, will you not know it? Then you will come from your place out of the far north. You've got a King James Version Bible. The word is uttermost parts of the north. It means to go as far north before you start going south. From Jerusalem, take a string on your globe and draw a line to either magnetic north or north pole and see what country is the last country you go to in the uttermost parts of the north. I'll give you one guess. Uh, it, it's, it has a leader who's a military and political leader. He's one and the same guy. He has a title by the name of Gog, or we would say Tsar. It's Russia. It's not Soviet Union, by the way. It had to be Russia. Thank you, Todd. I said that in first service. Did you know the CIA has evaluated Vladimir Putin's wealth? Did you know he's the richest man in the world? Did you know that? He's worth over 100 billion dollars. He didn't know that, huh? A guy born on the streets, a total street thug, came from a messed up broken home and has clawed his way into power. He's quite remarkable in his achievements, but then again, God has a plan if, in fact, he is the one. He may not be the one, but he fits the bill right now anyway. You you do know I'm not talking about the Antichrist. I'm talking about Gog. So verse 15, then you will come from your place out of the far north, you and many peoples with you, all of them riding on horses, a great company, a mighty army. This is Ezekiel describing a modern battle. He sees... Guys riding in tanks and other vehicles, he calls them horses. I think the word is uh, leapers or jumpers in Hebrew. You will come up against my people Israel like a cloud to cover the land. It will be in the latter days that I will bring you against my land. Hey, UN, 
It's his land. God says it's my land. So that the nations will know me when I am hollowed in you, O Gog, before their eyes. Thus says the Lord God, are you he of whom I have spoken in former days by my servants, the prophets of Israel, who prophesied for years in those days that I would bring you against them? And it will come to pass at the same time when Gog comes against the land of Israel, says the Lord God, that my fury will show in my face. For in my jealousy and in the fire of my wrath, I have spoken. This is God speaking. Surely in that day there shall be a great earthquake in the land of Israel, so that the fish of the sea and the birds of the heavens and the beasts of the field and all creeping things that creep on the earth and all men who are on the face of the earth shall shake at my presence. The mountains shall be thrown down, the steep places shall, be, shall fall, and every wall shall fall to the ground. I will call for a sword against Gog throughout all my mountains, says the Lord God. Every man's sword will be against his brother. In other words, the army, an army that's united will turn on itself. And I will bring them to judgment and pestilence and bloodshed. I will rain down on them, on his troops, and on the many peoples who are with them, flooding rain, great hailstones, fire and brimstone. Thus, I will magnify myself and sanctify myself. I will be known in the eyes of many nations. Note, it didn't say all nations. He says many nations. Then, shall, then they shall know that I am the Lord. Uh, the Lord God, every... Uh, oh, is that the end of it? Is that the end of the chapter? That's the end of the chapter. If you keep reading on into chapter 39, it describes that when they go to... When, when this group... Of, of Islamic-led nations, or Islamic nations today, but being led by this one who's got to be turned around and brought into it, it says that when they go to attack Israel, God says there, I will knock their arrows out of their own hands and will fall back upon them. He uses the word arrows. Everybody's talking today about missiles and everybody's talking today about rockets and ICBMs and all these things. Isn't it interesting that the God of the Bible says, I'm going to cause their missiles, their projectiles, to just come right back on their own head. The Bible says in Ezekiel, five-sixths of their invading armies will be destroyed by God. It, you say, what are you, what are you telling us this for? Because there's a lot of people today, in the media anyway, feels like a lot, sounds like a lot, that are very upset with what happened in uh, what, the last 72, last 96 hours? Did you know that the United, listen carefully, did you know that the United States, Special Ops, MI6, Special Ops, Mossad, Israeli Special Ops, and other contributors had been tracking for many months and had infiltrated the ranks of Qassam Soleimani, the most revered mastermind general of the Iranian military. Many people today have concluded that people like al-Baghdadi, Osama bin Laden, really answer to him. Because this guy, as you know, Iran is the number one uh, funder of terrorism around the world. They are the financier of terrorism globally. And their terrorism operations answered to one man. And that man, a few days ago, was removed from power. And, and you should clap. Every, the world should be clapping. In fact, the world is clapping. Did you know that when that happened, people in Saudi Arabia were celebrating? And did you know that in, in uh, Iraq, in Iran, yes. in Iran, people were waving American flags until they got caught? <laughs> did you know that Saudi Arabia was rejoicing that this evil man was taken out? From the age of 21, this man's ability to orchestrate evil under the guise of military uh, permission and military justification, slaughtered tens of thousands of people. Did you know just a couple of weeks ago he killed hundreds of his own people in Iran for not siding with the regime? 
Do you know how Iran works? Iran, which is so sad, listen, if you know, I know Iranians, and they say, don't ever call me an Iranian. That's right. They'll say, you, I'm Persian, I'm not Iranian. Persia's got a noble heritage. Persia, often in your Bible. Persia has often been a great friend of Israel. Think of Artaxerxes, uh, Darius, uh, Cyrus, or, uh, and others of that region, of that era, of that realm. Babylonian-wise, Nebuchadnezzar and others. But if you're of, if you're of, uh, of Persia, you're proud to be Persian. I worked 13 years in biomedical research engineering with uh, Baxter Healthcare, and I had wonderful friends and co-workers who were from Tehran, brilliant people. And um, listen, you want to get knocked out? If you ever want to get knocked out, uh, a lot of Persians, I tell you what, they love America. They love freedom. They love, they love being able to own, own their own home and prosper. And they love this country. And they're being controlled by a hierarchy of religious fanatics the Ayatollahs, and the Ayatollahs tell the military what to do, and then the people suffer under their decisions. And as I said, CIA, Mossad, and MI6 had been working together for a long time and had uncovered a plot. They would launch a series of homegrown and outside border attacks on the West, Israel and the United States to disrupt Trump getting elected. Because if there's, if there's a war, then we can't have him. We, we, need, we, need, we need peace, and this politician's promising peace. It's a, sta- it's a tactic. It's, it works all the time. And this had been going on until the other day. Until the other day, one U.S. reaper uh, delivered its payload to a small convoy that, listen carefully, that was in Baghdad. Uh, That convoy was driving Salamani to a meeting. There were other generals with him. Are you hearing me? He's Iranian. He's in Iraq, going to a meeting. And that motorcade was taken out. And I want to be careful how I say this. Um, within hours after the attack, I, I had firsthand uh, photographs from a soldier, special operator, contractor uh, from, from that situation. There wasn't, there wasn't anything left. In fact, I showed it to some of the guys earlier. I asked them if they had had their breakfast yet. There, there wasn't anything bigger than this. It was, it was so uh, devastating. And... You would think that America, when discovering and finding out that the elimination of this man and his plans to to attack and wage a war against you personally and your freedom, Israel and other countries, you would think that you'd be relieved. Ladies and gentlemen, recently, uh, al-Baghdadi, the founder, leader, and commander of ISIS, was destroyed. And some people were happy about that. Today, a man that many in the analyst world say he was the most dangerous man in the world, he's gone now. And you would think everybody would be happy about that. It's interesting, the people who are, who are most held under his thumb are rejoicing. But we're Americans. 
I mean, we are honestly, we are so ignorant and we like it. We, we, you know what? Mikhail Gorbachev said, we need to take actions against the United States because the American has a great need, a great desire to not want to know. Brilliant words and true by Mikhail Gorbachev. But this man's gone and we have now, we have now a group of people that are condemning our military. They're condemning uh, Secretary Mike Pompeo. They're condemning President Donald Trump for taking out the most dangerous man in the world. And those people, those four that I'm talking about, are the four horsewomen, horse ladies, <laughs> of, that have, listen, if you're a Democrat, listen up. Those women have completely captured your party. In fact, they snap their finger. Nancy Pelosi does exactly what they want. Huh. Chuck Schumer, he bows to these four girls now. They're socialist. They're anti-Semitic. Listen, pro-Sharia. And their lunatic communities elected them. And... They're saying that it's a sad day, it's a bad thing, we should never have done this, Trump needs to be investigated, here we go again. You saw Ezekiel 38 a moment ago, and you say, Jack, what does this have to do with my life right here and now? Because you saw the, the name Persia up there. Russia, listen, Persia has been threatening us a lot these last few weeks. I don't know if you know that or not. Do you know that? Anybody watching that? Uh... They've gotten, Persia, uh, Iran's got caught. Oh, hmm, did I say that right? Iran got caught? Or has the previous administration got caught? Yes. Ladies and gentlemen, did you know that the United States, did you know that we sent a hundred and some odd billion, billion, listen, before you leave the building because you can't handle this much truth. Seriously, did you know that a hundred and maybe 150 some odd billion dollars cash was loaded onto C-17 cargo planes and flown to Iran and given to the key leadership? No accountability. Congress didn't know. It was secret. Did you know that? You should know that. I hope you all knew that. They took that money, and one of the things they did is that they weaponized their energy program. That now today on the morning news, this morning news, they're discussing regarding the ICBMs that Iran have proposed or have, can they reach, and I quote, Los Angeles, close quote. We bought them, we paid for them. This is serious. Serious stuff going on. My point is this. Listen, there's kingdoms that are colliding. Don't get bogged down in the politics. You'll, lose all, you'll, you'll miss all the fun. It's not politics. There's a war of evil and there's a war of good. And it's played out in the material world. Just like this sex ed stuff. People have an agenda and it's evil. And you should have an agenda for righteousness. And listen... I just had the amazing honor, uh, tw tw uh, twice now in one month, uh, to be with our president and other members of his cabinet. And for Donald Trump to walk into a room, I don't, listen, forget about his, how he does his hair, forget <laughs> about his tweets. For a, for a man whose mother, did you, I didn't know this, did you know his mother was well known in New York as a prayer intercessor? Yeah, I didn't know that. You knew that. I didn't know that. Did you know that, have you ever heard of a guy, a pastor by the name of Jack Graham? You know, Pastor Jack Graham used to pastor a church in Florida. 
Donald Trump used to go to that church from time to time in Florida. And Jack Graham told us the other day that President Trump, now President Trump, back then, businessman Trump, he would hand out $20 bills to people who he thought maybe didn't have enough money to tithe. And he would give them money at the back of the church so they could put money in the offering. You say, well, I don't, I don't, I don't the guy's immoral. He's immoral. Well, uh, first of all, how do you know? But I know. I mean, we have, we have to be careful how we say that. Oh, he's immoral. Uh, just be careful when you say that, because according to the Bible, you're immoral. <laughs> according to the Bible, I'm immoral. So let's be careful about that. Let's just know, let's, let's, let's look at the facts. This guy's hated. This guy's hated because you know what? He's blessing Israel. God says in Genesis 12, you bless Israel, I'll bless you. And Trump grew up hearing Israel in the Bible. Is he born again? I don't know where he's at. Does he believe in God? Oh, he absolutely believes in God. Where is he personally with Jesus? I don't know. But I know this. He stuck his finger at 30 of us on Saturday or Friday night. And he said, you need, to tell, you need to go back and tell all your people to stand up for freedom and to stand up. For, I'm, I almost flipped. In fact, I did flip. I got out of my seat and I jumped up and down. <laughs> <laughs> because the main, the main body, if you saw it, it was carried on some channels. The main body of it was pro-life. Yes. And I'm a real pro-life freak because I, I survived an abortion. So I'm, I'm really happy about pro-life. <laughs> so... Thank you, Lord. And he challenged, he challenged. Now, I happen to be in a, in a group. I'll just say it's a group. That's, that's, that's what we're going to be doing. And that's what we do. But he spoke to these Christians in the room. And he said, you need to let the biblical worldview values get out. Don't be shy. He told the, uh, the pastors, don't be shy and timid. Don't be afraid in your pulpits. I'm sitting there thinking, are you kidding me? I'm hearing this from a president. That's something you would hear at a, at a pastor's conference. Remarkable. And so, so Russian collusion. Have you heard that? How many of you heard of Russian collusion? Raise your hand. So where is it? No, no, wait, wait. Let's, let's. Very active crew up here, right here. <laughs> I want to hear from another group. So after a, um, after I think a $27 million, $27 million FBI forensic investigation, forensic, no one survives an FBI forensic investigation. You don't survive it. If you put a decimal point on a wrong spot on a tax return 37 years ago, they will find it. <laughs> so he goes through a, a forensic investigation and nothing's found. Not only is nothing found, but don't you think a guy like Donald Trump and his business dealings, they would find something in that stuff? So it falls flat. You don't hear any more about it. Mueller report. Mueller report. It turns out the Mueller report, poor Robert Mueller didn't know what he was reporting on. And I'm not making it up. Oh, no, 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 no. I'm not making it up. When he was called to testify, if you need to watch it. He did not know. Some of the names of the people that were in his report, he didn't know. He, had, he didn't write all of it. He's, he's in trouble. There's going to be an investigation. It's not going to go good for him. There's a guy by the name of James Comey, who I could have swore I saw leaving the country at the airport. James Comey is going to be in big trouble. Former director of the FBI. How many of you listen? If you, if you don't like what I'm saying, I want, to, I, want to test, I want to test something. You say, I don't like this. I don't like this. Well, hang on. 
If you know what Fusion GPS means, will you raise your hand? Keep your hands up. Everybody look around. Hang on, let me think. Right. 75-ish of you know what GPS, Fusion GPS means. Fusion GPS now, with the investigation that was started to impeach the president, that investigation, only the hand of God, like Ezekiel. The investigation turns around, uncovers things that the owners of Fusion GPS never thought would ever be uncovered. And now William Barr has got to conduct an investigation. It's coming in 2020. Criminal, criminal uh, investigations have already begun. And there's going to be people in the news uh, that own Fusion GPS and that have been involved in Fusion GPS. And they go by the names of Eric Holder. They go by the names of Bill and Hillary Clinton, the owners of Fusion GPS. And now a president has immunity, uh, but it's, it's not good for America, but it's, it's very, th this is very, very, very sad. You say, where are you going with this? I am, hang on. <laughs> Something is going on with the republic that God has given you, the one that your children are growing up in. We are to be the gatekeepers and the protectors of liberty and freedom. Amen. Listen, according to a republic, the soldier that is out fighting for our freedoms, he's just as important as the person. By the way, Islam gets this perfectly right. The person that is paying taxes, plowing the fields, selling his potatoes, and a nickel of that goes to the local government, which goes to this, which winds up buying a bullet for the soldier that's on the front line in fill in the blank. Are you with me? We're all on the same team. We're all working together. And that's not happening now. We have got... We have got a, 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 a party that has been stolen. And it's been hijacked. And it's being destroyed. Ladies and gentlemen, if, if someone like JFK could come back from the grave today, he wouldn't be a Democrat. JFK was pro-life. JFK, you know what I'm talking about? Young people, do you know who that is? John F. Kennedy? PT-109? Jack? Right? Bay of Pigs? Cuban Missile Crisis? November 22nd, Dallas? I hope you know what I'm talking about. If he came back today, he'd be a conservative today. What he stood for then, he was a Democrat. Today, it's, listen, it, it's absolutely crazy. Our country is divided beyond. All of these attacks and these reports, every single one of them have dried up. And there's nothing there. It's turned around and has expose things where people like Hunter Biden will probably go to prison for, no, no, I mean, that's, that's just sad. It's just sad as a nation. Yes, God's in control. Hallelujah, he's in control. We're Christians. We're citizens of heaven. Absolutely wonderful. So I need to wrap this up, but There's a, <laughs> there's, a, there's a video, guys, can you cue up that video? And I, I don't know if you're going to get so much revelation out of it other than to just back up what we're talking about. But uh, before we play it, team, I want you to know, church, family, uh, all of Europe and much of the Middle East and the United States is on alert. And I don't know if you saw this, but I think 2,000 National Guardsmen have been, I think, don't hold me to this, I could have heard it, it could be in the wrong city, but I think, 
and if somebody knows, help me out. I think uh, New York City or New York State has called up 2,000 National Guard uh, to uh, protect us against an imminent attack right now from, from externally or internally. We do not know. Los Angeles, supposedly, I was told, ha have now been put on high alert. They have resurrected the D Department of Homeland Security motto, or not motto, um, a a exhortation, uh, see, something. see something. Did you guys not know that? You see something, say something. <laughs> okay, we need you to say something. <laughs> yeah. Uh, the citizens are to be on, on alert right now. They're asking the Americans to not travel internationally right now. Um, they have to do this. And that's smart to do, to be careful. But um, so why? Because Iran has said, you, you took out our man, so we're going to be taking out 35 locations that are dear to the United States and, and Israel. So, in a communication, Trump said, since hearing of your desire to target 35 locations of ours, I think he includes the 51st state of Israel in that statement, <laughs> of ours, <laughs> kind of funny. Anyway, I've ordered our military leaders to target 52 locations, 52 locations in Iran. I need to add that the 52, well, you know what? Let's put the tweet up. Why do I, let's, this is, here's the tweet. And I'll explain why this is important. Um, Iran is talking very boldly about targeting certain U.S. assets as revenge for readying the world of their terrorist leader who had just killed an American, true, and badly wounded many others, not to mention all of the people he had killed over his lifetime in the thousands, thousands, and thousands, including recently hundreds of Iranian protesters. They were freedom protesters. You would have been in that crowd. Lovers of freedom. He was already attacking our embassy. Stop right there. Did you guys know that? Yes. Did you see on the news? Yes. Uh, you know what you did not see on the news? You did not see another Benghazi situation. Amen. Benghazi, our military was ordered to stand down when under attack, when the embassy was under attack. They, they were not allowed to respond. They had to call the Secretary of State's office to get permission to shoot back. I don't know what, we don't know. There, there was never an investigation as to what she was doing. Actually, there was, but not really. The, but you, you need to go watch, go home today and watch 13 hours. It's a little bit colorful but the men who survived it signed off on its authenticity. They were told to stand down. They were completely left abandoned. I can tell you that our embassies are, they, they are to do whatever an embassy detail is, is supposed to do. The United States Marine Corps are tapped with defending our embassies. You know, what, you know why? Only, uh, you know why uh, this embassy attack didn't get worse is because the Marines did what they were trained to do. And they had the freedom to do it. So, and preparing for additional hits in other locations. That's a pregnant statement right there. Iran has been nothing but problems for many years. Let this serve as a warning that if Iran strikes any Americans or American assets, we have targeted 52 Iranian sites, representing the 52 American hostages taken by Iran many years ago. Some, by the way, if, if you're a Westerner like I am, you would say, that's so childish. If any of you are Middle Easterns, if you're from the Middle East, you'd say, dude, that guy knows how to talk Middle Eastern. We get that. Right? I'm looking at a sergeant who was there. Oh, yeah. That's the language they understand. You may not like it, but uh, that's the right kind of talk. 
So he says, some, the targets, some at a very high level and important to Iran and Iranian culture. And those targets and Iran itself will be hit very fast and very hard. The USA wants no more threats. 